Hi everyone, it's Miss Young. Welcome to our next video. Today I'm going to be showing you a painting by Claude Monet. It is called the Water Lily Bridge. And then I'm going to be showing you how to how to draw this bridge. So I have my arts encyclopedia and it's just a bunch, it's a collection of a bunch of paintings and I've already marked the page. So let me show you this beautiful painting that he did. And again, it's called the Water Lily Bridge. All right, and it's so pretty. Uh, obviously, you can see the two main colors that he used is the green, right? We see a lot of green and then the blue as well. So we have this bridge that goes across from one side over to the other. And then he has all of these. You can see all his brush strokes where he uses so many different colors of green, dark green, light green, yellow green, blue green, so many different colored greens across uh, across the bridge, around the back of the bridge, and even in the pond, right? We see he's used a little bit more blue down in the pond, but he's also used whites, pinks, purples, lots of different colors, uh, and lots of, of the same color, just light and dark colors throughout the whole painting. So lots of light and dark blues, lots of light and dark greens, and then when he did his pinks and purples for the water lily flowers, then he also used lots of different colors of pink and purple. So this is what I'm gonna be showing you how to draw today. So we're gonna start off with the bridge, right? Cause that's the main thing that we see. That's a structure that we recognize. We see the bridge, so we're gonna draw that first. Then we're going to draw the plants on one side of the bridge and the plants on the other side of the bridge. And then we can go in and we can draw where all of the water lilies are. So let's get started. For this project, I'm gonna be using a bunch of different colors. You'll see I have all of my, I have a bunch of different colored pencils. I have a bunch of different markers, different size markers, and I've got my crayons off to the side as well. Now, if you don't have all of those colors, no big deal. You don't have to use markers, colored pencils, and crayons. If you only have one of those, that's totally okay. Just use what you have, but we're gonna be using pink, purple, green, and blue. So definitely make sure that you have those ready and at hand for when we use them. Okay, first things first. Most importantly, we always put our name in the bottom corner. So Miss Young, that's me. Okay, always put our name in the bottom corner. That way we know who did the amazing artwork and that's gonna be you. So make sure you put your name instead of my name. And then we're going to start off with just kind of putting down some shapes so that we know where each thing is going to go on our paper. Okay, so I'm going to start off with pencil, and you should too. If you have a Sharpie, awesome. We can set it aside and we're going to use it later. If you don't have a Sharpie, don't worry about it. You don't have to use a Sharpie. Okay, but I'm going to start off drawing the bridge. Right, remember, the bridge. And then I'm going to draw the plants on either side, and then we'll start adding in the water. And then once we do that, if you have a Sharpie, we can go over it in Sharpie. If you don't, then you can just get straight to your coloring, okay? So we're just gonna draw to start very, very lightly so that we can erase. We're gonna draw a really long, skinny rectangle. So there's one line. Ooh. Have those be about the same, same length on each side like that and then back across okay so we just have we just have an easy peasy rectangle that way we know just kind of where our bridge is gonna be okay where our bridge is gonna end right here and right here and so we know that the water from the pond is gonna be underneath and we got to have all of our plants that are on either side right because if we look at this we have our bridge that goes across now I know his bridge curves and my bridge is straight, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we have all the plants on either side and then the pond underneath. Okay, so we're starting off with our long skinny rectangle. Don't make it too skinny. It's a pretty big bridge, so we want it to take up quite a bit of our paper, right? But we don't want it to be down here because that's where our pond is going to be. So it's, it's a little higher up on the paper. All right, before we started this video, I actually looked up some different bridges and I did some practice drawings of bridges. Now, I know when you look at these all at once, it looks really, really complicated, 
but it's actually not. So I'm just gonna go over each of them in Sharpie so that you can see that they're really just simple shapes. So let's start with this one down here, okay? I have my rectangle that I had drawn And then I started a pencil drawing. That went across so you can see I probably had now remember I drew that really, really lightly so I could draw over it and then erase it later. So my rectangle probably went from here to here across here and back across. All right. But when I go over it with Sharpie, I can make different shapes out of it. I can add little decorations and I can decide what is over the top of my bridge. Maybe, you know, maybe it's just land, right? You, your bridge can sometimes just go over land. It doesn't have to be over water all the time. It usually is, that's usually what bridges are for, but it doesn't have to be, it could just be land or I could come in and make little waves and my bridge could go across just like that. All right, so I have some different ones. I really like this one, okay? This is one that is kind of a walking bridge. If I look at these two up here, these ones are kind of more for, for driving across, right? So I have, there's one side of my rectangle and the other side and the bottom of the rectangle. And then instead, you can really lightly see the line that I drew, but I want this bridge to kind of come down in the middle. So, and then one pole right there, holding the bridge up like that. Okay, and then I can come in and add all of the little metal bars in between. And you'll notice I'm not following exactly along my pencil line. I'm doing my best, but that's why we drew with pencil really, really lightly, and that way I can I can come in and kind of go over top of them. You guys don't have to draw these. This is just kind of for you to watch to see how many different kinds of bridges there are. Then I can just add some cool little designs around it. You know, maybe this one goes over land. This would be one that cars would drive over. So these are just for you guys to kind of watch. You don't have to draw these but it's just giving us an idea of different kinds of bridges. So just using simple lines, simple straight lines um, and different simple square and rectangle shapes, I'm able to create different kinds of bridges. All right, but like I said, this one's kind of more for cars, so we, we don't really wanna do that one. I don't like that one so much. This one too, I don't think I'm gonna do this one because it's, it's, it's for cars, and this is, this is a bridge like in a park. So I'm thinking more of something like this, or, you know, I really like this one. Let me go over it in Sharpie, see how, how it feels once it's, the lines are colored in nice and dark. And then it would be like the plants coming from this side and plants coming from this side, where the grass is, and then maybe some water. And then instead of a straight line across for the railing, the hand railing, it curves just a little bit, just like that. And these are just practice, so they don't have to be perfect. I'm just giving some ideas a try. And then add a little bit of decoration to them. You know, and as I'm kind of looking at these, maybe I'm like, oh, you know what would be cool is if there was like a little rope in between each of those, like that. So I get to add to it as I'm working. So I feel like somebody would be walking across the bridge right there or walking across the bridge here. Uh, so they're just for practice. And this one too, I'm not sure about this one because I feel like this would be for cars too, right? I feel like there'd be a little tiny car driving across the bridge like that, and we're looking for we're looking for a bridge that somebody can walk across, right? So this one, you know, I don't think I like this one or this one or this one, because uh, those are more more like for cars. So I'm gonna do one of these two. All right. So 
We've had a little bit of time to practice our bridges. We've looked at a couple of different designs. Again, you guys didn't have to draw that. You're just watching me, following along. Because then we can come back to here and now we can decide kind of what we want our bridge to look like. We have our square and we know that there's land. So I'm just gonna draw kind of like a squiggly line right here where my plants are gonna be on one side. And again, just a really, really light wiggly line right here. That way I just know this is where my land ends and then my pond would be, you know, kind of down here, right? But we have our bridge. So let's start with the ground, right? Because you have to start, a person would be standing right here and would walk across. And I want my bridge to be curved just like the bridge in the picture, right? It's not a straight line. It has a little bit of a curve to it. And he has his own design for a bridge, but the cool thing is is that you get to make it your own so you can have a different design for your bridge, just like the different designs that we practiced. So we have our bridge. I'm gonna have it curve. So from the ground right here, it's gonna come up, over, and down. And draw really lightly, because you can always erase. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. I've had lots of practice with these. So, you know, I, I, I can do curved lines pretty easy. So if you don't get it right the first time, no big deal. And, you know, I really like how in this one, I have this, this part of the, the slope, the part that you walk on is really thick instead of just having it be one line. I really like this. So let's add that. Right, so from my ground, I'm gonna have a line that comes up right there and a line that comes up right there. And maybe that can even be a little step. So maybe I'll do a little backwards L shape and then a regular L shape, capital L, just like that. And then maybe one more, backwards, capital L, backwards, capital L, and then we're gonna connect the same curved line we did here is gonna go from here to here. And again, nice and light because you can always erase. Whoo, okay, I did that pretty good. If it takes you a couple of tries, no worries. That's why we draw really lightly so that we can erase. But I just got lucky and I did it pretty good on the first time. All right, now we have the bottom of our bridge, but we need to have a railing because you know you have to have a railing to go across the bridge or else you might fall in. And I, I really like uh, the bottom of this one, but I'm not really sure how I feel about uh, all these little designs that I did on the top. I'm not really sure how I, how I like that. I kind of like how on this one, I have a pillar right here and a pillar right here that marks the start and the end of our bridge. So I'm gonna put those first and then we can maybe come back to the other stuff. So right here, I'm gonna have a line that comes up to the top of my rectangle and down. So really, really tall, skinny rectangle right here, just like that, okay? And I really like, I like adding little details to the top. So I'm gonna put two little, circles and maybe to make it extra fancy I'll put another little circle on top so a medium sized circle and a small circle and same thing on this side medium small all right now here's where I'm, I'm my brain is starting to get moving I'm starting to think of different designs and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line it's right about the middle of my bridge right here, right at the top where the top of the curve is. I'm gonna draw a line, okay? Again, light enough that I can erase it later. And then about how long these are, so let's see, probably about the length of my pinky, maybe a little bit shorter, right? So from this crack, this knuckle part of my pinky to the top of my pinky, I'm gonna have the same length rectangle. Okay, maybe I use my pencil to measure. So from the top of my eraser to right here, and I'm just gonna hold on to that point. So top of the eraser to right here, bring this over to right there. Okay, so I know how tall it's gonna be. And then make that into a long skinny rectangle with our fancy medium circle and small circle on top. So now I know how tall up my bridge needs to come. So I'm gonna draw that curved line 
it's going to connect up and down just like that so we have our bridge and I'm gonna make the railing really thick so that your hand has something to grab onto so I'm just gonna come in with another line right next to it okay just like that then I can come in and I can decide okay I want a couple of skinny railings right because we you know if we leave those big gaps there then somebody can fall through so I'm just gonna come in with some straight lines just like that all right and I think for now maybe I can you know add a few more things later but for now my bridge is plenty fancy okay let's let's mark this paper let's let's get our bridge down and solid and it's it's there it's in sharpie it can't be erased that way I know where my bridge is and I can erase all of those extra lines so everything we just drew that we want to be solid that we don't want to erase we're going to trace over. Okay, all those little stairs we just drew to right here, going up. Again, if you don't have a Sharpie, now would just be a good time to maybe with your pencil, go over it a little bit darker, kind of harden some of those lines, draw them a little bit darker so that we know exactly where our bridge is. And we kind of have it permanently on our paper. Remember with the Sharpie, it's really easy to mess up. So we want to take our time. Because if you go too fast, you know, you can't erase. Alrighty. Now, I have just this last little bit and then the railings. Just like that skinny tiny little railings to keep people from falling off I know I'm going a little fast so right as soon as I finish this put in my last few lines let me move my hands and now would be a really good time to pause the video if I've been going too fast for you and finish your bridge okay before we do anything else we want to have all of our bridge done not colored in, but just the drawing part done. So now is a really good time to pause the video if you need to, and then we can continue going. So if you've paused it, then awesome, welcome back. Now we're gonna keep going. If you didn't pause it, then let's just, let's just keep moving. I'm gonna add where I think my pond is gonna kind of be, which is, you know what, let's not do this in Sharpie, let's do this in pencil, that would be smarter. Our pond is gonna kind of come up from one side this way in a curve and one side this way underneath our bridge. And it might even go even farther back, you know, maybe it kind of zigzags, you know, out that way. But we're doing this all in pencil because then you can just erase it all. But we know that we have our plants that are gonna come over from one side this way and one side this way. So now is the perfect time to come in with some big zigzag lines that kind of overlap each other. So just back and forth zigzag lines like that on either side. So that's where our, our grass, our weeds, our plants end. And then all of this in here, this would all be water. Same thing over here, a couple more zigzags, come up on one side, zigzags over on this side. And then we kind of know where our plants are and we can come in and fill in the water at the end. So now I can take my Sharpie and I'm gonna pick the zigzags I like best and I'm gonna go over those ones. So I'm seeing a few right in here. I kinda like that those overlap. Just like that. I see another one right here that's good. So I'm just picking the zigzags that stand out to me that look like ones that I wanna keep. And going over those with Sharpie. Don't forget these ones up here. Some of your lines might overlap, that's okay. When Monet did his paintings, they weren't 100% they weren't perfect. They were kind of messy. 
So we're looking to do the same thing. We don't want it to be perfect. We want to just, you know, we want to make it a little bit messy. So that's okay. All right, I have one side. Then let's do this side. I'm going to add a few more zigzags. Maybe I didn't have enough with my pencil. closer to the edge of the paper. So I'll come back in with these. Again, they're gonna kind of overlap. They're gonna be messy all over the place. That's totally okay because Monet's paintings were a little bit messy. Whoop. See, and I messed up, no big deal. Because Monet's paintings were a little bit messy and sometimes that's just how it goes. Okie dokie. Now the last thing I wanna do before we start coloring is I wanna look at the pond. So you'll see where our water come, line comes along. It comes right up here, comes around, and then all this kind of turns into grass, but our water line keeps coming this way and it circles back down. So I'm going to come in and just kind of where we've lightly drawn this, I'm going to come in and try to figure out where my water line is going to be and just nice and easy kind of draw myself a just a kind of random zigzag line that goes across. That way I know where my water is. And then we'll know that there's gonna be a bunch of plants, more zigzag curve lines in here. There's a bunch of plants underneath the bridge where water meets shore, zigzag up and down, back and forth, plants like that. Right, and then we know above here, let me bring the, this back over. We have a bunch of, it's really kind of hard to see in the picture, but in real life when I'm looking in the book, we have a lot of leaves kind of hanging down from the trees. So we can do the same thing on our paper where we're just gonna have, we're doing lots of zigzags today, you guys. We're gonna just gonna have some, some vines kind of hanging down. Remember, Monet's paintings were messy and crowded. So it's okay if everything kind of overlaps, but straight up and down lines. Like that. Whew, wow, okay, we got a lot going on. That's okay, no big deal. All right, you know what? I totally forgot. We also, before we get into our coloring, we need to come in and add some of these water lilies. Okay, and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna add a bunch of oval shapes like that that are all kind of right next to each other. Really skinny ovals laying on their side. Some of them are connected, some of them are touching, some of them are kind of apart. And then maybe right in the middle I can do a little U shape where our water lilies would be. And then we can come in and color those in, in our purples and pinks when we're ready. A couple more ovals down here. Don't make it too crowded, leave some space. But again, Monet's paintings are very crowded and very busy and a little bit crazy. So it's okay if your ovals and your U shapes get kind of jumbled in the mix, all right, just like that. So we have our bridge, we have all of our plants on each side, we have all these hanging trees, and then we have our pond, our water lilies. It's a lot, I know, it makes it look really busy, really crazy, but now is where we get to have some fun with it. So if you look at this, you'll kind of notice that Monet's edges were not perfectly straight. If we look over here, it's all kind of just like wild marks that he's made, right? There's no straight lines, there's no pencil lines. Everything's just kind of like messy and wild and all over the place. So I want you to do the same thing on yours. This is where you got to kind of have a little bit of fun. I know we talk a lot about how in art we don't scribble, but in this case, there, there's gonna be a teeny tiny bit of scribbling. So I'm gonna start with my greens because green was one of the 
most common colors that he used in this. We see a lot of green. And I'm gonna start with a marker. If you wanna do colored pencils or crayons, whatever you have is totally fine. It's up to you. But you're just gonna kind of do the same thing where you almost get to scribble, but we're scribbling on purpose, right? So it's different than just scribbling because we're trying to go too fast and we're not paying attention. We don't wanna do that. We want to make these crazy zigzag lines, but we wanna keep them in control so they're not too crazy. So you're just following the lines that you made and you're, you're just, you're kind of making a lot of zigzag lines with your colors. Same thing with these plants in here. Oh, and you'll see my green went into my bridge a little bit. That's okay, because sometimes Monet, when he painted, his colors would overlap each other and it would get, it'd get messy. So it's okay if your picture is just a little bit wild and a little bit crazy, because that's how Monet was. And when we're learning about artists, I can get a different color green. When we're learning about artists, sometimes we copy their style and sometimes their style is a little bit messy. So I'm kind of just going in and almost scribbling, not quite, but just adding lots of dashes of this bright color. Just a little bit crazy, a little bit wild, and that's okay. Sometimes in art, you get to do that. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and then maybe I'll mix it up and I'll bring in a colored pencil. Okay, same thing, and then I can kind of just add some more zigzag lines. Maybe a few over here. Kind of color some white space in. That's another big thing. Monet had no white space, except for when he used white paint, of course. But he had almost no white space. So we want to try to, even with our scribbles, we still want to do our best to kind of fill the whole thing in. And I'm going over top of my name, but since I wrote it in Sharpie, it's okay, because... I can still see it, just barely. Okay, just like that. Maybe we'll go back to marker and we'll do a different color green for these hanging leaves. See, you'll notice, you know, my, my color kind of went over the bridge, that's okay. Monet was a little wild, a little crazy. So his picture was never perfect. He was a little all over the place. All right, I like those. Let's see, let's take this, uh, let's do this green. Oh, that green's hard to see, that's okay. Take another one. You just get to kind of try them out. All of his colors kind of mixed together all over the place. Everything was just a little crazy. All right. I've got a lot of different greens in there. Let's take a look at this. What's next? Pretty sure we have all these different blue colors. They're starting to go into the bridge, but let's not do the bridge yet. Bridge will be last. So let's look at these guys where our blue is in our water. Take out your blue markers, blue crayons, blue colored pencils, whatever you want to use. And again, not crazy, not totally scribbling, but leaving things just a little bit messy. Because that's the style that Monet used. He made things just, he just made things messy, and that's okay. Different color blue. Oh, that one's a little too similar. So we'll only do a little bit. I really, I really like. Monet used lots of darks and light blue. So I want a blue that's totally different. Let's look at this one. Ooh, that's pretty. Right. Monet painted really, really fast. You know, it's funny actually, a lot of other artists would make fun of Monet and say that he went too fast and he didn't take his time on his pictures and that didn't make them very good. But Monet thought that working quickly made things a little bit more fun, which is what we kind of get to do. We get to have a little bit of fun with it. And we get to kind of go a little fast Throw a little scribble in there. You know, make it a good time. 
All right, and then the water lilies, the lily pad that it sits on is green. So let me just green those in. This, I know I'm going quick, but Monet was, Monet was fast. So when you do yours, you can do yours quickly too. Then I can come in with my pinks and my purples and do little zigzags where I want. Little zigzag. I'm making a bunch of like little tiny W's. And then some purple ones. Like that. And we have our water lilies. And last but certainly not least is our bridge. Now, Monet did his bridge green and blue. If you don't wanna do your bridge green, green and blue cause you're like, it's too much green, it's too much blue, you won't see it, that's okay. Cause I think that's what I'm gonna do too. I don't really like that. So pause for a second, let me get some browns. Here we go. Got a bunch of different colored browns. We can come in and do that to our bridge. That way our bridge looks like a bridge you would normally see. Cause I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen a green and blue bridge that blends in with the background. It's usually different colors. It's usually a, you know, blue and green would just, you, you wouldn't be able to see it. It wouldn't be hiding, it'd be like a hidden bridge. Which if you wanna do that, maybe your bridge is a hidden bridge, then go for it. But I'm gonna use the browns so that my bridge really stands out. Now again, Monet, you know, it was never perfect. He liked to use zigzag lines, streaked lines. So I'm not gonna make my coloring perfect because that was what was kind of, again, unique about Monet is he just kind of made things into scribbles. So I'm gonna fill in as much as I can, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, and then I'm gonna put some brown right here for my lines on my bridge. Alrighty, let's see. You know, I'm liking it so far, but I see we've got a little bit of white space. So now would be a good time to maybe grab like a light green and just fill in the background. You know, this is a quick one, you guys. I'm sure a lot of you will need to pause the video and that's totally okay. You are welcome to pause it. There, that way we don't have any white space. And I used a really, really light green so that it wouldn't overpower the bridge. And there we have it. There is our beautiful water lily bridge. That is so awesome. If on the back, if you wanna write water lily bridge, water, W-A-T-E-R, lily, L-I-L-L-Y, lots of L's, water lily, B R I. D, G, E, Water Lily Bridge, so that you remember. And then if you wanna write Monet, so that you know who the artist was that we talked about, M, O, N, E, and then there is a silent T at the back, M, O, N, E, T. But here is our Water Lily Bridge. It is vibrant, it is beautiful, it is fantastic. We have so many different colors, so many things to look at, and we got to have a little bit of fun with it. We got to scribble and make it kind of wild because that's how Monet's bridges were, how his water lilies, how his paintings, how everything he did was a little wild and a little crazy. So I know we went kind of fast, so we're gonna use, uh, you know, after this video is over, use whatever time you have left. Um, during our art class to to finish your bridge, finish your water lilies, get done what you can, and then you can always finish working on it later. All right, but we wanna try to fill in as much white space as we can, but we also kinda wanna leave it wild and messy and a little bit scribbly. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Great job today, and I will see you next time.